Let us begin. Let us begin again. Hello everyone and welcome to BHC Studios. This is the part two video to my long-term review of the Fujifilm X100V and the Ricoh GR3. And I've had both of these cameras on a long-term loan, but Fujifilm said, uh, do you mind sending back the X100V? And I said, no problem. So I had to quickly kind of shoot this video. I think Rico's gonna let me keep the GR3 for a little bit longer. So thank you so much, Rico North America. I was basically testing these two cameras as my EDC camera. So it wasn't like an image quality test. You guys know that I've already shot, I think, two videos and an article with the GR3. And I've already shot, I think maybe three or four videos on the X100V, so I'll put the links down below for those that wanna see the individual reviews of both these cameras. I'm not gonna, I can go on for like an hour and talk about these two, but I enjoy using both of them. But I'll let you know after the last three months, which of these two cameras that I would pick as my EDC camera. So let's start now. Actually, a quick shout out to KEH Camera who are sponsoring this video, so thank you so much. Uh, they are the original reseller of professional, collectible, and everyday gear for camera lovers everywhere since 1979. They buy and sell from photographers just like us. They refurbish, they renew, and they resell at fair prices. And so they really do become part of that endless cycle of creativity, community, and opportunity. And so we'll talk about them a little bit later at the end of the video, but uh, I'll have discount codes for those that wish to either buy or sell cameras. And so let's start the video now. For those of you who don't know what EDC stands for, it is everyday carry. So everything from like uh, carrying a little pocket knife to, uh, I guess everyone has a smartphone now, but an everyday carry is like things that can kind of fit in your pocket or something that you don't mind carrying with you every day. And going way back to the old film days and even before that, uh, I'll give you some examples of some of my favorite kind of everyday carry camera that I've had. Uh, this is the Konica Big Mini, and this is a reasonably cheap, it was about $200 Canadian, like 20 years ago, and cameras like this you just kind of carry around everywhere. Uh, the, this was an expensive one, but this is the Nikon 35Ti, and even going way back to the 1970s and 80s, you had the Olympus XA, with this really cool uh, detachable flash unit here, something that maybe uh, Rico should consider for the GR3 because it has no built-in flash. And here is the, the last Rico uh, GR that used the smaller sensor, and this is a GRD4, and it does look a lot like the GR3, doesn't it? And in fact, it's almost the same size, so much so that this case here was actually designed for the GRD3 and the GRD4, and this is the GR3, and in fact, I use this case to carry the GR3 uh, in, even though it's meant for a much smaller censored camera. And so these are the kind of cameras that I, I would consider uh, EDC. Even this one here, uh, it was a sort of a one-off from Fujifilm, the X70, and I love this camera. And look how small and thin, and yet it had a articulating screen on here. And so for everyday carry, uh, which camera did I choose to carry most of the time? Well, I think the answer is pretty easy. It is the GR3. Now, before you say anything, remember this isn't a review of which of these two cameras are better cameras. It's which of these two cameras did I choose as my EDC or everyday carry camera because I know there's so much uh, sort of a comparison between these two cameras and I can tell you as a camera definitely the X100V is the more capable camera objectively speaking it has more features it has the things that you know real photographers are looking for it has a hybrid EVF OVF it has an articulating screen uh, it has an f2 lens this has IBIS but you know I don't know sometimes I think having the f2 is better than having IBIS. Now in terms of lens sharpness, they're both very, very sharp lenses. Uh, I tend to prefer the 28mm equivalent wide angle view versus the standard 35mm equivalent on the X100V. The question is which camera did I choose to take with me all the time? So I'll give you an example and that's kind of why you see these, these bags over here. These are sort of like the three EDC bags that I typically carry with me when I want to go small and light. And this is the, the newest one. 
the Chrome Industries Mini Cadet and I shot a separate video. I'll put the link down below for this. I've already packed this out to kind of give you an example of kind of how I like to carry my cameras on my day off. Um, typically number one is I will, if I have a review camera that's reasonably compact and small, I want the review camera with me, right? So right now I have the uh, Fujifilm X-E4 and the 27 Pancake and that fits quite easily in this corner here, right here, right? So I have the strap with me as well. This is the Peak Design, the little anchor system and I have a clever supply strap and I just attach this on here. And then in the middle here, I have my DOP kit. This comes with me everywhere I go and that fits inside here. And then I typically carry a, a film point and shoot. So in here, I know the case says Olympus, but it is my film Ricoh GR1. And then I have uh, a little point and shoot, which I just happened to throw in my GR, the original GR, but the limited edition in that kind of hammer tone, greenish aqua finish here. And so all these cameras easily fit inside this really small five liter bag. So let's just kind of go backwards. I throw this dock kit back in here. I throw in the, the XE4 in the corner here. And then a film point and shoot in here. Now, where's the room for the X100V? It's not that it, I couldn't make it fit in here. I could squeeze it in here, but in most cases, this, this camera here, I mean, look at that. It could just hide inside my hand. It's a camera like a Ricoh GR3 or the original APS-C GR, or even when it comes to, you know, even the X70, right? Will easily fit inside and it just kind of comes with me everywhere. And even if it's just the one camera I want to take with me, I'm going to take the GR3 over the X100V just because it's it's much smaller. And just to quickly show you the other two bags, this is the Nico Sling Bag by Chrome. This is also a great sling bag, everyday carry for cameras. And finally, this is the Peak Design uh, 10 liter bag. And I actually picked this as one of my top bags for 2020 for everyday carry. And that's a different video I've already shot. I haven't edited it. But actually a bag like this could probably hold the X100V, but again, the way I have this bag set up, um, it just won't fit it the way I use a bag like this. So because I use bags like this, these small compact sling bags, if I was, again, choosing between these two cameras, having something light and compact is the priority for me. And I found that uh, nine out of 10 times, I always grab for the GR3. And oftentimes I'm not even prepared to take proper photos, like I'm just kind of out and about, usually with my wife, or even if it's just me going home, back from the studio, back to home, or out shooting with the review gear and just wanna take a camera out. Sometimes even at night, if you see a lot of my photos with the GR3 were at night, and it just made a lot of sense to have this because I have IBIS with this. And so um, this worked out really well for the way that I shoot. But let's kind of go over then, still the pros and cons between the GR3 and the X100V, and overall what I would suggest that people should get for an EDC camera. So first starting with the X100V, <sighs> I can't find any fault with this really. It's it's weather sealed other than getting that little adapter and putting a filter in front. It pretty much has everything that I would want and I think what most photographers want. Great lens, great color, really powerful processor, great talking head video camera. I've shot some YouTube videos using the X100V. Um, IBIS is the only thing that I would actually add to this camera. Even just recently, Fujifilm added the neutral density filter for video, which is something that a lot of us have been asking for. And there's a little few little firmware quirks that I wish Fujifilm were better at, like in terms of file management. I wish it was easier to create new files when you shoot every day. The Ricoh does that every time you shoot. There's a feature where every day is a separate folder, which is great, especially if you're doing travel photography. But overall, there's very little wrong with the X100V. And in general, if someone asks me, as a photographer of these two cameras, which would I suggest as their primary camera or their one camera they have? 99% of the time, it's gonna be the X100V. This is a very specialty camera. And in fact, I can see a lot of people hating this camera. I don't see too many people hating on the X100V. I think this is pretty much universally loved. And so other than IBIS and other than it being a little smaller, and that's kind of where I think that if there was an X80, a replacement of the X70, something this small, so you can see the size difference in the X70 and the X100 series. And then if I compare 
the X70 to the GR, you could see there's not a huge, I mean, the X70 is still bigger. And so if there was an X80 versus the GR3, I actually think I might've gone with the X80 because other than the IBIS, having an articulating screen, having the latest sensor processor, having the different film simulations, uh, I think I would've picked the X80 just because of the, and also the lens. I like the, the 28 mil equivalent. And so uh, if, I don't think they'll ever make the X100 smaller, especially if they put IBIS in here, but you know, there's nothing to fault with this other than someone like me, I already have, an X Pro 3, and that's usually what I tell people is based on your ecosystem, what camera would you use? I have the X-T4, I have the X Pro 3, I have the X100F, I also own multiple Ricoh GR film cameras and digital cameras, and so if I have to choose between these two based on what I already have, I'm picking the GR3. If I had no cameras, 100% X100V. If I didn't have the X Pro 3, then maybe I would have picked the X100V instead of the GR3, but my current ecosystem tells me to get the Ricoh GR3. And so, perfect camera, but it's just not the right camera for someone like me. So now let's talk about the cons of the GR. Well, as well as the pros. Ricoh GR3. It's not even close to almost perfect like the X100V. I wish there was uh, at least an electronic viewfinder that you can attach here. So if you wanted an EVF, you could, but they just don't make one. I understand why there isn't a, an electronic one here because it, the screen is too big. To have an electronic viewfinder here, you'd need a much smaller screen, like a two inch screen. I don't think most people would want that. If at least in the next generation, I wish they could put a articulating screen like the X, 100V, they can make it flush, maybe make it a little bit thicker. In fact, they made this so small that they remove, they remove the flash, right? Pop-up flash, GRD4. Pop-up flash, the GR, the original GR APS-C. This has no pop-up flash. And even in my, my video that I shot on the GR3, I showed the uh, Olympus XA, and I basically said, take this flash and attach it onto this and have an accessory flash. if if they had to, so that those that want a flash can buy something and, and, and it's an accessory that they can sell to people, right? So like what Apple does, remove things and then sell dongles to replace it. I think people would do it. And finally, a bigger battery. Now this, because it has IBIS, uh, you definitely need a more powerful battery. And this battery is just tiny. It's just a tiny little battery. It's just, it feels like a toy. And so I do wish the battery was bigger. If I had the GR3, I'd probably have two or three, even the batteries don't take up any room, but you know, it's so, it's so small. You always have to be concerned about that. And in terms of IO, there's no HDMI out. You just have a single USB-C out for power and data transfer. The Wi-Fi app is still kind of hokey. And I wish they didn't remove the toggle the toggle here for exposure compensation. You can have it dedicated uh, to your little adjust toggle here. And I also wish the back wasn't that weird toggle rear dial. I wish it was a proper spinning dial that's on the, on the top front here on the GR3. So there's a lot of quirks to it and I can find more things wrong with the GR3 than I can with the X100V. But again, for my ecosystem, it makes more sense to carry something like a GR3 because I have a constant rotation of review gear coming with me. But um, you know, on a deserted island situation, if I had to choose between these two, 100% I would pick the uh, X100V. But I'm not on a deserted island, I have choices, I have bags that I can carry things in. There's a certain style that I wanna shoot when I'm out and about on my days off. There's a certain amount of weight that I'm willing to carry on my days off. And there's other type of cameras I wanna carry with me. I wanna carry a film point and shoot and a review camera. So taking all those things into consideration, it makes the most sense for someone like me to shoot with the Ricoh GR3. So thanks again, KEH Camera, for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned before, they buy and sell cameras from photographers like us. They've been around since 1979, and so they know their cameras. And maybe you're looking to buy something as quirky as a Minolta 110 Zoom SLR, or something really cool, one of my favorite cameras, the Minolta XD, or perhaps you're looking for something newer, like the Fujifilm X100F, 
or maybe something more professional as I showed before, the Fujifilm X-Pro3, well, KEH might have it in stock. Or if any of these cameras you have and you don't have any use for it anymore other than it's sitting on a bookshelf, well, consider selling your cameras to KEH. Now, I have discount codes down below. If you use the discount codes when you sell, they will give you 5% more for your item after the quote. And if you decide to buy, you'll get 5% off when buying. And if you actually buy and sell at the same time, you won't get the double discount from me, but they will give you 10% of whatever you buy and sell. And so that's awesome if you have a lot of gear you wanna offload, but there's certain things that you wish to buy yourself. Now, KH website's pretty darn easy to navigate. There's a buy and there's a sell section. They have over 60,000 items in stock, up to 40% off below retail. It is 100% KEH approved, appraised, graded, renewed, and resold with a 180 day warranty. These cameras are graded by experts, renewed with care, one of a kind, sustainable, and exchangeable. Thank you again, KEH, for sponsoring this video. And I think on the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go inside their website, as I just showed you, and get you guys to pick what camera you wanna see me have KEH sent to me, and I'll shoot with it and do review just for you guys. So go check them out, see what they have. Let me know down below in this video what you want me to choose. But by the time I make the next video, those cameras might have already been sold. But I will do it next time, maybe I'll even do it live, and then get you guys to vote either during the video or maybe after the video, and you guys will vote which camera you wanna see me shoot with. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And so that's my, my final thoughts on which of these two cameras uh, would I choose as an EDC camera, not which of these two cameras are the better camera. And so thank you so much for watching and happy shooting. Sorry, another thing is, Rico, you need to fix the autofocus. You need better autofocus, all right? Hopefully on the GR4. Let's go again. Oh, brother, where art thou?